with with all of our guests, we like to start right at the beginning. So what can you tell us about the Bratz America's Next Top Model competition? Oh, yeah. Um, so basically, I feel like when I, my first memories of photography and like being into fashion, and this is like, this is more of a recent reflection. I haven't like really touched on this ever when like people ask me in interviews, like, how did you get started in photography? What interested you? It always be like, I started like, I found like my dad's um, old film camera. And I always saw like people taking pictures at like weddings and stuff. But like, I was reflecting a while ago, and I realized that was actually my first encounter with photography was being on the start of YouTube and just the most random videos. Um, like, while my friends were like into the actual America's Next Top Model, I was on YouTube and I found this weird like community that like put brats into that and like kind of made it a whole brats things, which are like dolls if anybody out there doesn't know. Um, and basically they like dress their brats dolls up and take photos of them as if they were taking photos in America's Next Top Model and like putting those submitting those into competitions on youtube and then like these channels would always like feature all the different contestants that submitted their photos and it'd be like a whole thing and there'd be like a winner at the end um so that's kind of really how i got started in photography was i saw that and i was really interested in like telling a story about someone and a doll was like the easiest way to do that um, it gave you a lot of creativity and freedom and they came with like tons of clothes um, and you could literally just like go into your backyard and like put her next to a flower and like take photos like that so I feel like that's really where my creativity and passion for photography really stemmed from um, so that's like yeah one of my more recent like memories of photography so it like did it kind of start because like you love the dolls or you love the fashion aspect or like how did that kind of all incorporate together? Yeah, I think, well also Bratz dolls are known for being very fashionable. And I feel like whenever I'd go to like stores and stuff like Target, I'd always go to the brat section. Um, so, and I feel like because they're so fashionable, it's like what caught my eye. And I think that's also what just got me into fashion photography and like the interest of fashion. Um, and I feel like that interest has developed in different ways to not just like be fashion photography, but like incorporating fashion and style into different types of photography. Sophia, was Bratz around when you were young or is this yes. like a recent? Excuse addition? me. I'm not as old. I don't know. I don't, I've never, <laughs> I never played with Bratz. What do you want me to say? I, I was like doing research for this interview is like the first time that I heard of a the Bratz, the Bratz dolls. dolls. I they were. Why are they called cute. Bratz? Because they had giant faces on their heads, and then like tiny. It was just like it was the style of their face makeup or like face like design, right, Simra? It was just like they were had like these yeah. giant eyes, and like yeah, it was like, like they're a just out specific. there. Yeah, they're, like unapologetically bratty. Bratz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. The more you know, the right. more you know. The more you learn. <laughs> Um, and I don't know, I actually don't recall, though. I never played with Bratz. Like, they were never a toy that I owned. But did, were there, like, brown or black or, like, not white Bratz dolls? Was that a thing? Um. Yep. Yeah, so I think there's, like, four or five. I think there's four main girls. It's um, Chloe, a white girl. Jade, an Asian girl, East Asian girl. There was Yas Yasmin or Yasmin. We don't really know what she was. I'm assuming she <laughs> ethnically was ethnically ambiguous Persian. Yasmin. I like it. Yeah, and she had like a beauty mark, and she had like medium skin. And then there was a um, black Brad stall named Sasha. Um, so they actually had one of. That's pretty had progressive. Yeah, that's, you know, for, yeah. For like the early two thousands or whatever that was, like that's not terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's some diversity there, considering I don't even know how long it took like Barbie to not just be a white girl. So yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> nice. So given that, like that kind of thing, and so 
um, and that photography with the dolls specifically. Do you do you feel like that? Because you have a really big um, desire with your photography now to kind of touch on topics of like skin tone, colorism, representation. Um, and so do you feel like you use the dolls at that point because of their diversity to do that? Or did that come later? I feel like at, it came later, but I feel like that definitely like imprinted on me as a child because you know like when you're like seven to like nine years old that's where like your brain is more the most impressionable and Mm -hmm. like even if you're consciously or unconsciously doing something it's still going to impress your mind um I feel like me playing with those dolls and like because I've always liked playing with like dolls that looked like me or as close to looking like me as I could when I was at that age yeah um so um I feel like just by doing that it kind of had an effect on my like work in the long run definitely if you like that clip make sure you like and subscribe to see more conversations and content featuring Muslim creators from around the world the Halal Gap is a Moscow's production make sure you search Moscow's Film Fest on Instagram Facebook and TikTok to learn more. And Twitter. And Twitter. There's four of them. If you do that type of thing.